But just to start with episode, just to start off with episode seven, um, you know, Gambit's gone. He went out like a G. Nightcrawler's back, you know, doing his doing the you know uh, whole. Thing. <laughs> Our boy Gambit gone, and Rogue is going through it. But Rogue is going through it both ways. She lost both her man. She lost Magneto, and she lost Gambit. She lost both her booze and shit, and she she's conflicted. Um. A lot of people. I, I want to ask you guys: How do you guys feel about Captain America in this episode? Because a lot of people were saying Captain America was like doing some fuck shit. But I'll be honest with you, he was kind of he was kind of speaking facts as like it's not much I can do. Yeah, I didn't really like Captain America in this uh, as a cameo in this episode because it was it, it was kind of a far cry from his MCU depiction. Right. It was kind of his pre MCU depiction, which is fine. But I didn't got so used to Chris Evans' depiction of Captain America and how he's kind of yep. changed that character over the years to see like the old fashioned Boy Scout Captain America was a little right. bit jarring. So I, I guess I appreciate that he was in it, but it, it just really didn't move me. I feel you on that. I mean, he, because he was more like comic Captain America, and you know, Chris Evans' cap is more like a Superman type of Captain America, you know, more hopeful. <laughs> Like when if he sees something wrong, he's gonna stop it. He's not gonna let the U.S. government dictate what he needs to do, right? He, he's he's right. if he sees something wrong, he's gonna stop it no matter what. Uh-huh. But I don't know. I feel like Rogue was kind of foul for throwing that shield. It's like it's not his fault. Your your fucking boyfriends are dead. Like that's not his fault. You know what? They're only mutants, man. They're not Americans. You know. So, what can you say? I mean, they, they would technically be Americans if they were born here. No, they were Genosians. Oh, Genosians. Okay. I, I thought they moved to Genosians. I don't know how that works uh, nationality and politically, though. Well, because well, like, wasn't, wasn't Genosians not as a country yet? Wasn't Genosians still trying to get recognized as a country? Right, exactly. They had just got recognized, though, by the UN, right? I think I remember like that was I, part of the point of a Magneto leading or some stuff. Well, well, because remember Magneto's trying to get Rogue to like um hook up with him so they can um strengthen strengthen the relations and make their like get get it like help uh push their country into the UN even quicker. Mm-hmm. That's why he was trying to set up like that, you know, like hey, if we hook up together, you know, a hey, hey, a, a, a genosian and a mutant from America who he, hicking up together, like you know, this can help the ties that we're trying to do. Um, I mean, should we? So, this is the M episodes we're talking about, the episodes where Gambit died, yeah. And then the yeah. next episode where Cable came in and um, they was they, they found out that one villain I forgot his name, but the one who is a who is this a descendant of the Sentinels. Is is the one that been pulling the strings this whole time, Bastion, Bastion, and we come to find yeah. out Magneto isn't dead. He has Magneto. No, and- wait a second. Wait a second. Seven six is where Gambit dies. Episode six is Gambit's death. Right? Yeah, this is the following episode, the funeral, and then they, and then seven, in seven they're the chasing down the clues that's leading them to ultimately Bastion at the end of the episode. Right, mm-hmm. and then the eight episode is. Yeah, where all the Magneto was right. Things, everything goes down, and Magneto is basically right. Um, I'll say this: like about the seventh episode, I was hit and miss with it. I, I I kind of liked it. It was it was more entertaining to me than the first um, uh, couple of episodes until they got to that Gambit episode. So it was better than those, but I was up and down with it. Uh, and then the ending was crazy when, like, you find out, like, the Sentinels have become biological, you know, yeah. like, they, they've basically made a virus so that they can inhabit, like, mutants and humans. That, that shit was crazy. I'd never even thought of an idea like that. But that was really, really fantastic. And it, you know, kind of speaks to where, you know, current technologies might go in the future. Um, you know, kind of organic technology. Uh, Techno organic machines or whatever, but uh, 
the eight on that point, on that point of sentinels on that point point point. of sentinels though those, those zombies sentinels i thought were actually fantastic because yeah. we've seen uh sentinels like in days of future past i really love those sentinels i like the original okay, sentinels right. the og yeah. sentinels and now we have kind of an evolution of the sentinel yeah. and i think the sentinels pose such a credible threat to the x-men um so to see those zombie techno biological sentinels i think that's a great advancement on the idea of one of the major foes for the x-men yeah absolutely yeah, cause, cause, cause um, now, cause now the sentinels are to the because you know sentinels used to be these big giant robots see? they're they're in plain sight they're not hard to miss now you have sentinels that are civilians now and as bastion said if one of the civilians get triggered by a mutant in a certain area and they pop off mm, that's a mutant that's 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 gone but if the mutant wouldn't expect it the the, the mutant can expect a sentinel coming so you know that's why you have the x-men there to protect people but now it makes it harder for the x-men like when they revealed them here look how many just swarmed swarmed them and just ganged up on them like it is so many that you can't really counter this type of threat it's too many of them oh it's messed up i gotta give props to my boys wolverine and nightcrawler in this episode they were standing on extra business tag teaming <laughs> defending rogue this was some cool this this shit was dope yeah yeah this is the first time wolverine has actually really done anything to be honest in the whole show it was, it was epic yeah um and of course yeah uh nightcrawler but um what do you think of rogue's new kind of attitude as well i thought that was kind of interesting like she was just willing to kill off and we haven't actually spoken about Rogue's relationship with Magneto and um, Gambit and uh, how we feel about that. But those are two things that like really stood out for me was like the Rogue basically going Rogue, essentially. And it's, she's like, all right, I'm going to kill this guy. With, with, the, with the Rogue thing, it's like, I mean, look, that's her relationship. That's how she got it going on. I know Gambit was feeling some type of way, but it's like... With Magneto, she can touch Magneto. She's one of the only few people that she can actually touch and possibly build a romantic connection with. With Gambit, she can do that in some way, but not in the same exact way like she could with Magneto. Look, I'm, I'm look, I can't. I'm not gonna say she wrong for what she did and stuff, but it's like with her situation, it's like you know. There are so many ways her and Gambit can get on. It's such bullshit, man. Um, all they need to do, look. They need to find a kinky telepath, right? Like, let's say Emma Frost. As long as Gambit wears a condom, he's fine. As Emma long as Gambit wears a condom, he's fine. Be, no, Emma Frost would definitely be down for a threesome. Especially with wow, bro. <laughs> right? Wow, That's yeah. what they need. Telepathic link, do a little, you know, thing. They've got the danger room. Danger room style. They can now do a, a four-way between each other. She's, he's doing stuff to... The, the the holographic um rogue and she's doing stuff with the holographic gambit that would be a real turn on watching at the same time what you're doing to each other come on bro there's ways around this she shouldn't have done my boy gambit like that bro the way she kissed she kissed magneto in front of him bro there was mm. no need for that that was outrageous bro that was I mean, wild. It was, it was, it was, that was, that was wild that was wild but she ended up backing away that from was wild. she ended up she ended up choosing gambit at the end of the day sure but you can't do that guys yeah that you know, was, that, that's, yeah, that that's, was, that's, that's talk that's death talk you're talking about two very very powerful mutants right um and you're just like fucking with them both like you know in front of each other making it, make it, it it out too. what would you do if you're if if you went and your girlfriend was doing that to your homie in front of you you'd throw hands bro a lot of people would throw hands yeah she wild for that i ain't gonna hold you she wild for that <laughs> but see this thing this thing too ro could have ro could ro was so powerful she could have won both their asses honestly that's why it, it's a look i understand it's a tough situation well, she can't whip magneto's ass anymore because she she can't use her touching power on him oh, yeah magneto at the end of this episode look 
you he's know, so he's literally elite. a mega level mutant, but god dang, he literally right. shows all the power worldwide. Right. Like, how powerful is Magneto, man? I mean, like, it just goes on and on and on without how many abilities like this magnetism gives him. Like, a right level he, mutant he, detected. Right, exactly. What is this shit? So what did he do here? He just killed the, all of them using what? He, 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 he just cut, he shut off all the technology. He tapped into the Earth's magnetic field. Yeah. Yeah, so and he, then, you know, he's on mega level. And I was so impressed by, by that scene because it, it really made me think about Magneto. I grew up uh, with Magneto being my favorite X-Men. And the reason why really? is because I, I, yeah, I learned very early that his positionality to me is superior to Xavier's. This idea that mutants have to be like okay with humans and stuff. I agree with Magneto. Like, why do they have to be force themselves to be okay with humans and humans are being very antagonistic? Mm -hmm. So when I see Magneto well, go to the top of the world and shut down all of the power. It makes you realize how much grace he's actually shown this entire time. He's always been graceful because of Xavier and because of Xavier's views. Because at any given time, he could go to the top of the world and shut the fucking planet down as we know it. Yep. So he's yeah, always yeah, practiced true. civility. And I'm glad he finally went up there and said, you know what? I'm going to show you who I really am, how powerful I really am. And I'm declaring war on the people who've killed my people. Yeah, yeah, he did. He he definitely showed a, a degree of moderation, but the problem is that his way, no matter what you want to say about it, whether it's right or wrong, is there's only one way that that can lead. That will lead to the death of all mutants and all humans, because a war between humans and mutants will everyone's dying. Basically, the mutants aren't enough. I don't think their population is enough to deal with how much military might humanity has, um, you know, uh, accrued over the 20th and 21st century, like in that comic book world. I mean, if you look at the technology there, so I think a war between humans and mutants will only lead to um, mutual annihilation. Whereas Charles, he might be idealistic, but his way is the only way because either there's peace or they find a way to live with each other or they're going to destroy each other, one or the other. But they're so. not, though. The, see, see, this is the flaw in that philosophy. The, the threat of the mutants' existence will always agitate humans to provide greater and greater protection from mutants. So, so like uh, Bastion said, tolerance is extinction. If we tolerate these people, these mutants, the longer we tolerate them, the closer we push ourselves to the brink of extinction, meaning we have to be active in our ability to combat what they can do that we can't do. So with that being said, cool. even if there's a peace on the surface, there's always going to be an underlying threat that we mutants will cause and damage, which will cause a natural response to protect themselves ultimately. But I mean, the war is inevitable. To bring it to a, to a, a point of a modern conflict that's happening it's kind of like you know in some sense palestine and israel right i know it's, it's like a weird thing to bring up right now but like the question remains on both sides israel and, and palestine like um can can given their beliefs given what is entrenched in their beliefs is is peace even possible at this point right so then if peace isn't possible what can we do what what, what is the, as far as you know because you brought up a good example israel palestine right to me there's only one there's one side that's for sure the offender in the situation and one side that's obviously like you can look at it as the victim but the this is the only way i can see it is that one side definitely does not have the might to push back on the greater side so right other people need to step in like physically to push this up to push this to push the the aggressors to stand down but if you do that then the people coming in to help the other countries are going to go like well we help you out so what can we get out of you this time but also so it's, it's, it's like it's like i i want other people to help but if i ask these other countries to help 
these people that they're, they're, going, to for they're you. going to demand something from these people that you know they probably cannot give or want to get, and then they'll but, just be but, but, but here's the here's the impossible part of it. Now I don't know this to be true. I'm just going to be taking. Um, I'm not even. I'm not even going to be taking their word for it. I'm just going to say like. This is what they say, and I haven't researched it enough to know that what they're saying is untrue, right? Um, Ham you know, the, 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 the people that are embedded within Palestine, like Hamas and all of these kind of um, groups, they have a belief system which makes it impossible for there to be any kind of free democratic state within uh, Palestine, right? So I'm, this is the last thing I'm going to say on this, and I'm going to finish, and then we'll go back to the show. Um, and if you've looked at recent history, Hamas actually got voted in in Gaza, right? So, and, and these are people who have a complete hostility, supposedly, towards Jews even existing in that area. Yeah. So the analogy is between this, the two situations is that I understand what Black Guru is saying about the nature of, like, if you've got a, um, a kind of hostile, uh, you, you know what you were saying about, like, uh, how, I'm not, I'm, I'm messing up because I'm trying to do the uh, analogy. It's hostile yeah, I'm trying to go right? away from the palace because it's too much of a crazy conflict to go into at the moment. But, um, the, I can see what you're saying about like there being a kind of impossible situation for mm -hmm. humanity as well, because the fact is, just by the nature of evolution, if, if you've got a group that's kind of more powerful, even if they're dedicated to some kind of, uh, you know, even if a majority are dedicated to some kind of peace, it will only take a few of them to cause so much right. havoc to humanity mm -hmm. that, you know, they I have the analogy. To at least mm -hmm enough power you know to be able to resist that so i kind of see the impossible situation but again i still think that charles is right like in the sense of even though it may be impossible no matter how impossible it is the other the alternative is complete annihilation for both or annihilation of one or the other which is equally hor horrific that, that's why right, that's why right, in a way both sides are correct but what, where I do really agree with Guru on about Magneto is that he has been holding back. He has been being fair to an extent. Yeah, he is a villain, you know. But we just seen in this episode how far he took it. And he can take, he can stretch it as far as depriving people of, and, and mind you, he can, he can, he can hold this down to where people starve to death. They get so cold that they freeze to death. Like, and mind you, especially when we live in a society technology, we live in a Storm could do this as well. He's not the only mutant who could just fuck up the whole world like that. Right. But see, Storm is an ally to is also an ally to humanity and mutants. Magneto is only an ally to mutants at this point. So you know, but I'm not saying you're wrong though. You are right. You are right. But Black and, 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 is exactly right. Sorry, just uh, that. And Magneto's totally been holding back because a part of him wanted to believe in what Charles was saying. Mm -hmm. The thing about Charles, Charles's position too is that it puts him on two battlefronts because not only does he have to fight the likes of Magneto and, and the and the mutants who would want to attack humans, but he also has to fight humans who would want to attack mutants. So right. it, it puts the X-Men in a precarious situation because not only are they battling humans, they're battling mutants. To try to maintain this peace so he stretches the x-man thin because he puts them on two battlefronts so even going back to when i was a kid back to when this show originally came out in 92 um it was one of the first things i realized like i don't agree with professor x now i i in spirit it, it's the right thing to do as far as the spirit of what he's trying to do is correct but the practicality given that world and that universe situation he's just really kind of stopping trying to stop the inevitable Right, so, that, and, and that, and that's, that's you're world. saying that w w w w that in that world they will have to destroy themselves. That's it. It has to become some kind of dystopian reality. 
Well, and see, that's that's the struggle. That's, you know, it's it's just you know you got your checks and your balances. Ultimately, the X Men, like we were said, are stuck in a bad position because ultimately people are going to want you to have to pick a side, and you might have to get pushed to pick a side. Like, for example, when Superman has to deal with Doomsday, Superman could go like, "Well, I'm not going to kill this guy," but ultimately he's going to have to get pushed to a side where he has to kill this guy. He has to do something that he does not want to do, but he has to do it in order to deal with this threat. That now, is, Superman's is wrong. Superman's just plain wrong. I enjoy that he has that philosophy, but yep. there's no way that a creature like Doomsday comes to Earth and is just dedi like dedicated to just the murder of everything and he's as powerful as Superman. And he's just like, oh, I'm just gonna, what are you gonna do, imprison him? Oh no, no, I agree that you have to, I mean, he did, he did have to have to kill it, but like there's a part of that doesn't want to do it, but ultimately you have to with this type of situation because there's no, you can't reason with it. It was, it's going to do what it wants to do. And only thing you can do is stop it from doing what it wants to do, which means you have to take its life. So ultimately the X-Men, I mean, at the end of the show, I think they're probably going to write it to where Charles is going to be, his philosophy is going to be correct, the correct way, because now Charles is back. But I just, I just, I just want to see how, how they're going to do it and if they're going to make it interesting, because I don't want to... I think the show is questioning. Charles. I think this X-Men... Like... Go ahead, Nerman. Did he cut out? I think he did. Well, yeah, well, I, I did I didn't like when uh Charles arrived with all that bullshit talking about uh tell me my ex man all this shit, bro. You should have been here, yo. You should have been here, bro. You kind of late to the party. And what what I find troubling about that or interesting is that he left Magneto in charge. Yes. So why did he run back when he found out Genosha happened and Gambit was there? If you let Magneto left Magneto in charge, then let him handle it the way that you anticipate on him handling it. Don't try to run back and save the day because all my X Men need me. Well, hell, you left Magneto in charge. So what yeah. you didn't trust him? Like I, that's a contradiction of terms, is what I'm saying from Xavier. Like either he's capable of handling it and you believe in him, or you don't. Well, Which I think I think that's going to be the tension uh, this upcoming season. They're going to have a Magneto's. To get Magnet Magneto probably not going to budge at this point because it's like, well, Charles, I tried your way. Mm -hmm. um, you passed off to school to me. We thought she was dead. And now you're coming back to try and, in a sense, baby me and, you know, pretty much tell me, like, hey, I don't got this. And to right. be fair, I mean, to be fair, I don't, I don't even think Charles could have dealt with the Jadosha situation because Magneto, you know, they, it was it was an unexpected attack. But Charles should have should put more trust in Magneto. Let me ask you this: How do you think Charles would have responded to Genosha? I, I for me, I think I well the stuff Rogan was doing, he probably wouldn't have approved that. Like them, he probably would have done a lot of sitting and waiting, and just not acting like they was doing. Like when Rogue decided to go to see the guy that made the Sentinels, and you know mm -hmm. she just dropped him left. Like they was trying to figure shit out and stand on business. But I think Charles would have been a little bit too um, passive in the situation. Yeah, like, but I don't, but I don't even think. But I don't think he would have done better in, in that Genosha attack either. Like it was unexpected. It was. Yeah, it was I just don't so see quick. how his philosophy, how his philosophy leads, to, leads to a reasonable solution. Okay. Like once Genosha happens, it's kind of Magneto's time now it's kind of like magneto was right and we need to take the magneto path because i don't understand how xavier's pacifist philosophy could have created a, a purposeful response to Genosha. yeah because hey, 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 this, hey, hey, was an act of war this, this is they are going into war this that attack was an act of war go ahead Herman. Go, go, go. No, I mean, let's not uh, uh, pretend our boy uh, Xavier is just like some straight up pacifist. Like when he uh, need when he needed to destroy Master Mold. You remember when he flew his plane into Master Mold and shit? Like I gotta destroy this evil. He he was, you know, like he understands when it comes to something that is trying to exterminate mutants that 
he has to deal with the problem. Yeah, I'm saying he would have been good in the Genosha battle, but what I'm suggesting, Nerd Man, is, and, and I want to hear from you too, what philosophy or what strategy would do you think Charles Xavier would have taken as a response to Genosha? Like, from his from what we know about Professor X, what strategy would he have come up with to respond to Genosha effectively? What do you think he would have did? Well, first of all, we don't know if Genosha was set up by mutants or or humans. They it was don't Bastion. know that. It was Bastion. Bastion working with uh, Sinister. Yeah, Bastion set it but up. Sinister's a mutant. Right. So... I mean, so does he? I'm, I'm trying to say, what, what, how does Professor X go after it? That's all I'm trying to say. Like, what, what, what is he can't blame all humans for what Sinister is clearly planning. Sinister well, and Bastia and everything is planning. Well, it's, it's a not. combination because, because that blonde, the lady with the blonde hair, she was in on the attack too. Yeah. And she's human. So it's a collective thing of mutants and humans. That's what we did. There was, there was Doctor Doom in there. There were a couple of other cats in there mm -hmm. as well. Like it, it was like a conspiracy between an, uh, uh, groups of um, supervillains. Like the technology was created by human beings, but yeah, it's something like uh, Latveria is in on it. I'm, I'm assuming Latveria and Do Doctor Doom has Latveria in it. But that's another country world power jumping in to the situation. Like it's a whole fucking conspiracy, which is crazy. I hopefully next season we're going to see like you know the Fantastic Four, all of them working together and probably even going head up with the mutants. Probably get Avengers versus X Men next season because it seems like everybody's gonna go to war. Oh, and by the way. Do, you, do we think Gambit's dead as well? Because we now know Magneto's alive, but is Gambit dead? Mm, I wouldn't be shocked if he comes back in some way, but I, I think got some spoilers on that. I don't know how true it is, and I don't know if they're going to go this direction with it. But in the comic book, ultimately, he wasn't dead. When they did this storyline, this Bastion storyline in the comic book, ultimately, he survived. He became one of Apocalypse's... Um, henchman or something like that so i don't know if x Men 97 is going to go that route he may actually be dead because they had a funeral for him but in a comic book comes to find out gambit became one of apocalypse's four horsemen well if that's the case more than likely apocalypse showing up in future seasons then he's but in yeah. a trailer apocalypse is in the opening uh credits i mean yeah so yeah i mean this um this is part one of of the finale part two drops next week um expectations i can expect for that mm -hmm. perp been hating on it i've been having to get on perp ass he want to keep comparing it to different anime and shit. oh it ain't better than uh go go ranger it ain't better than uh man stop trying to compare american made the good american shit to anime i mean for an american animation and for marvel studios this is look. I'm not gonna say this is good. This is excellent. This is actually <laughs> one of their only good. This is Marvel Studios' only good show that they have produced right now, and I, I'm I'm shocked. I'm like, damn. I got I I can't hate this time. I can't be the MCU hater. I gotta give it some love. <laughs> right. Oh, like, I'm gonna be an MCU hater. They finally got back to their roots, though. Like X Men for me, I never really read the comics as a kid. So this was my introduction to Marvel, X Men '92, the the uh, the Fantastic Four show, and the Spider Man show in the '90s was my introduction to Marvel. Yeah. So this is how I learned about all this stuff in the first place. So getting back to their roots could really help reset Marvel Studios because they were off track for a while. Right. Well, I think, and I think, because, and to be fair, I think DC and Marvel does both does this. Um. A lot of the material they pick from, like, okay, let's can we kind of what what decades could we say Marvel and DC were at their best with comics? Because a lot of people say the nineties, the nineties, early eighties, nineties. No, I, I wouldn't say that. Uh, I like at their very best. Yeah, like at their very like what decades were their very best when it came to like comics? I, I think comics. early early two thousands before New Fifty Two reboot was DC's. 
best Dan comic Hot. stuff. But then also, 80s was quite good. Yeah. Um, it was a, like the 80s to the 2000s for Marvel and DC for the most part. And I yeah. think with the, some of the new stuff we've been getting from them, like the MCU stuff and the um, DC stuff, they've been pulling from like like the, the, the whole DCE, New 52 pool, right? Pulling from New 52. I'm not saying New 52 was bad. I'm not saying it was good, but it was not received well by a lot of people. And it was pulling a lot from that. And I say even Marvel Studios now is pulling from a lot of comics and more stuff, than, more than uh, like more modern comics that people aren't really resonating with. You know, and I'm uh -huh. just saying, you might have to go back and pull that some 90s stuff, like some 80s stuff, bring that stuff back and just, you know, re, 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 give us give it some new life. Because that's when the, the, the source material was really fucking good. Right. I agree right. with that. I, I mean, I just think, like, my approach, especially with DC, uh, and uh, but also with X-Men, because, like, X-Men was fantastic, um, you know, in the 90s and stuff. Um, uh, I think they had a real kind of renaissance um, in the 90s after the, actually after the animated series. Um, but just before then with Chris Claremont as well. Um, which what a lot of the anime, animated series was based on. But um, my approach would, would be is like, it's very easy. Like, if a director wants to do a movie of a particular character, um, especially DC, just go on, go on, like, top 10 comics of this character, and then you can compare a list of, like, say, 20, and the comic books that keep coming up, go and read them. You can draw some inspiration from them. Yep. It's that simple. I don't. I don't really see what the big uh, complex issue is um, with uh, you know because there's enough material in just maybe like uh, ten or twenty comics for each character. But but they do that though, like um like the mm -hmm. Robert Patterson Batman movie. It kind of oh, drew. Batman. Yeah, it kind of it kind of drew from Hush. It was like Hush and the Riddler. Well, Hush is the Riddler. So, but it kind of told the Hush story a bit. They they changed it some and added some different uh, elements to it, but it was basically Hush all over again. It was Hush, but it was also they took from the Riddler from Batman Year One, uh, Earth One, uh, Volume right. Two. Uh, they took a little a bit from um, uh, what was it the. The one with the uh, Halloween, the long Halloween. Yeah, yeah, the long Halloween. That's the one, yeah, the long Halloween. Yeah. They, they took bits from all of those. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, no, Batman. And that's why the Batman films come out so consistently, I think, quite quality in terms of, like, uh, the movies. Because ever since even the days of um, the Burton movies, they were always drawing inspiration from, uh, you know, the classic Batman comics. Whereas for some reason, with other characters like Superman, uh, Wonder Woman, even um, Shazam, they actually really did adapt to one of his best comics. Um, and I think the guy—it's uh, so unfortunate that he gets docked on because I think more than anyone apart from Batman, like those two movies drew a lot from Shazam lore and. They did a lot in um, kind of showing love to the source material, but whatever. It is what it is. Um, but definitely, yeah, like um, uh, with the Wonder Woman, um, Aquaman, Flash, I think they could have drawn a lot more heavily on like the comic kind of runs um, and just taken like bits and, 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 and fleshed out, a, you know, a story from like the top 10 best comics of theirs. Yeah, and I think because uh, we do got another topic we do got to hit. But final thing I would say overall is Marvel DC, just pick from y'all best shit. Read y'all shit. Pick from y'all best shit. Y'all know what it is. That's why I'm going to say this. I'm excited a little bit for James Gunn DC because he's pulling from um, um, he's pulling from the best stuff. He's pulling from the modern stuff. So No, 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 no. It, a lot of He's pulling uh, that guy who he did who did all star superman oh he's he's pull he's pulling a little bit from that yeah uh, uh grant morrison grant morrison even his bat the batman uh movies inspired by some grant of grant morrison's movies. batman um stuff is like early 2000s like 90 
early 2000s and I am here. So I'd say no, but if, if go he, back to the roots a bit. Go back to the roots a bit. Well, we'll I think see. I, yeah, because I'm just saying I think the modern stuff needs a little bit more time to resonate with society. The 90s stuff came and it, it's like it resonated, yeah. It resonated. The modern stuff they're pulling from now is like stuff that you need to wait until time tells if it's really good or not. Right. I agree. They're, they're, they're pull, like like the whole um like even with the bad girl movie, like you know, they were trying to go inspire bit or based off her burnside suit and everything. I'm not saying you can't do that, but it's like you could have went with like a better Batgirl suit. You don't went with a more traditional Batgirl suit from like the early nineties. Where are you, bro? I'm not saying it was gonna be bad, but it's like you could have pulled from something a little bit more established before pulling from new shit that people are like kind of like eh, up in the air about. Where are you, bro? And I've got one I'm more point. I'm at home. I, uh, this my uh, this where I live at. Oh, where's that? It's, uh, uh, you don't it's know. Texas. Uh, oh, Texas. Okay. Yeah. Cool. I, I I I used to live for a little bit in Texas. Anyway, um, so um, I don't recognize it, but I just you know. Uh, no, it, uh, but um, I was gonna say one thing about your boy James Gunn. He was asked a question after X Men '97. Do you think they should do a revival of um, the Justice League? Do Justice League 2000? No. <laughs> I would if it wasn't completed, but it was completed, so I'd say no. But because because this is the thing, if you're not going to bring back like Bruce Tim, uh, and M Paul Dano and most of the OG right. people that was working on that, I really don't want to see the OG people weren't working on X Men '97, and plus, uh, what's his name? What's that? What's our boy's name? Who did the uh, the uh, Batman, um, the original series? Bruce Tim. Bruce Tim completely lost it. Completely fucking lost it. No one can tell me any different. Um, I think he's overhyped. And I think actually after the Batman, um, that Batman. No, no, no. I would say that. Wait, wait, Nerman. No, 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 I would say, no, 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 say, say something. No, I would say it was something that's more integral. Something that's more integral. Let me finish this. To that Justice I'll show. I my Dwayne, McDuffie, Dwayne McDuffie, but he passed away. I was, I was about Dwayne to McDuffie is way more integral. To the Justice League status Thank shot, you. all that. So you know, I wish he was still alive. Rest in peace to the man. But you know, right. if if he was still alive, like, hey, do that shit. Dwayne but, McDuffie. But, but, but maybe and Dwayne McDuffie. There's another but, one. There's another one. Probably you know. Mention as well, because Dwayne you know, McDuffie was, I think, the secret source behind the Justice League. And then um, I think it was Kim and or another black dude who did the first animated movies, like that, you know, the animated movies of DC that everybody like goes, oh yeah, those ones were wild. Those were, ones were really cool. It, there was another black guy that was responsible for that as well. And the woman who did, um, who directed the Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse was also um, the one who was doing those early DC movies. Anyway. I, I've been mean, no, I'm not saying they can't do it, but the reason X-Men 97 is even continuing because the show technically wasn't done. It got canceled. Like, it was never completed. got no real conclusion. Mm -hmm. It was supposed to continue, and they're just finishing it, you know, extending it. Justice League did kind of have its ending and tied everything up, so that's why they just leave it as is. But I wouldn't be against it, but I'm not going to push for it. Plus, DC no, already I has enough quality animation. Like DC has a ton I don't of think it either, yeah. but I think it's a better idea than Creature Fucking Commandos. I don't know what he's doing. So. But Creature oh. Commandos is for the you know, like this is this because this is still a uh, Elseworld X Men show. It's not even. I'm not sure if it's gonna. Well, okay, we don't know yet if it's gonna tie in a Deadpool and Wolverine because they talk oh, about oh, Deadpool and Wolverine supposed to twist up the whole multiverse shit again. Oh my god. So, Shano, maybe this might be tied to it in some way. Maybe they might bring these X Men into live action and show them. I don't know, but I I feel like this show is just going to only be for it's whatever else world it's in in the MCU. I feel like there's going to be nothing bigger than just the X Men '97 universe. What did you do?